Hello, beautiful bastard. The name is Wolf, and welcome to Hex Guardian, a roguelike tower defense that is absolutely brutal. It's going to hurt. I don't know what the developer had in their cereal this morning. Split second games, I'm looking at you because you just seem to enjoy making players weep. Granted, it is published by Yogscast, so we are expecting some shenanigans. And yes, this particular game, Hex Guardian, is akin to, at least in my opinion, to the likes of Isle of Arrows, Rogue Tower. I've also been seeing Kingdom Rush be thrown around, which I guess I can see, although I feel like it's more roguelike than traditional tower defense. And we'll see in just a second as to why that may be. Now we have talents right here. We do love a good meta progression, although due to the difficulty increase in this game, directly even on easy mode i would expect some of this to be mandatory i'm specifically looking at any potential damage and range upgrades either for your towers or your potential units like your barracks and such but yes we'll just do a new game we'll do easy grassland and as you can see i have not been able to get past eight days now i like to build tall and not wide this game seems to prefer building white over tall or maybe that's because i'm in the early stages of Meta progression, I am not sure yet, but for now, we'll build the tower. You can see we have some units coming from the blue portal. These blue archways are the portal spawn points for the enemies. Yes, that also means the water. Yes, we also have air spawn points. It's a nightmare, but yes, <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go along. Now you can, the good thing about this game is that you can actually try to lock in these portals and diffuse them, making them inert. And you can actually get a bunch of money for it if you do it, uh, do it on a momentary spawn so if we were to close this portal right here if we could we can't but if we could we would actually get all the money for all the units that did not spawn because we quote unquote killed them right like that's kind of what it is very good now i did unlock a blessing meta progression so hmm, let's actually try to go with opening strike let's see if we can make that work I, i'm gonna go with thunder Ooh, okay. I'm going to go with Hydromancer. Hydromancers are quite lovely. Now, as you can see, we'll put another tower right here. We also have the build land tile costing one block. Now, it will become more expensive as we um, build more tiles. So we have to be somewhat conscious of our placement. Just a little bit. But yeah, I am trying to fish almost immediately for ways to close this Ooh, if we get the right piece that's an immediate close right there which would be very very lovely now we do have spells as well you can occasionally get an upgrade card which can upgrade your existing buildings that you have access to or your spells even very very lovely stuff let's actually skip this and let's go fast forward because i have the attention span of a goldfish that has been raised by an alzheimer patient so let's move forward there you go end of the day and we get a card in this case we do have a upgrade to our hydromancers or we can pick up spearmen and i do want spearmen spearmen are my favorite melee type right now they're so good they have a, uh, a lifesteal upgrade making them very solid now one of the things you might have already noticed if you picked up on it the towers are becoming more expensive every single time you build the same tower it becomes a little bit expensive until you hit the cap um there's actually no cap to the building of the tower but the upgrades also become more expensive which is frustrating. Let's see, 80 gold. I click on 80 gold. The other tower that I did not upgrade is now 120 gold. Now these upgrades cap out, so it doesn't become more expensive than the most expensive upgrade, but it's still a little frustrating that if I keep buying more arrow towers, they become, I think it's like 50 gold more expensive each time I buy one. Kind of artificially causing inflation, forcing you to use different towers, thus building white and not tall, right? Not a terrible thing. It's a preferential thing. I prefer to build tall, as I said earlier. They seem to design in a wide way. All right, let's see. Arches are not bad either. Uh, I'm going to go with the spearman, though. Because I'm hoping, and I am being ambitious here, that I might get lucky with my Hydromancer. Oof. Almost a luck. As you can see, however, it generates two new portals. So I'm just going to see if I can push this completely away from my base and just kind of forget about it move this around a nice lovely corner piece um 
sure. Let's see if we can maybe make a, a dead end right there. We do have some boats coming in, and boats are my biggest nightmares right now. They are absolutely just unreasonably unfair, in my opinion. I don't know what it is with the boats, but I can't seem to deal with them effectively. They are the, constantly the reason that I am dying. Even the flyers I can deal with, but the boats, ah, they are frustrating. So let's go. Day four. As you can see, we are doing okay on the boats for now, but it will soon change. We do have the blessing as well for the damage. So as long as we deal with towers, we should be okay. Perfect. Which is also why I'm building more towers than I usually would as a result of that blessing. Um, cannon, archery. No, let's do a thunder. The more thunder I can use, the better. We have more boats coming in from the left. We have a big army of swordsmen coming from the right. I think we're going to be fine on the swordsmen. They're quite easily dealt with as a result of our beloved spearmen. I am going to see if I can fish for... No, I'm getting a lot of interesting cards. Just none of them are good for me. Instead, what I will do is I'm going to put a artillery here and a hydromancer right there. And hopefully... That will provide me with some tools that make me very happy. I'm probably better off putting it slightly closer to here. There we go. That way we have full attack range. All right. As you can see, most of these uh, soldiers on the right are being taken care of. They're very squishy. And then we still have two spearmen at the front. I am primarily focusing on those boats. And I'm afraid that one day I might even focus too much on them. Let's go with a thunder. All right. More boats on the right. We do have some islands. Ooh, another curve that is beautiful. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Now there won't be any kind of melee units spawning from the top. It's completely just water now, which is frustrating. I don't know if it is, but hey, <laughs> you got to take what you are given, I suppose. Is that, a, is that the saying? I don't really know. I'm too frustrated with the boats right now to care about linguistics and language and sayings and empty platitudes i am going to zap these boys i do not wish to deal with them now i know the melee guys seem overwhelming but i know we're going to be fine because they're very squishy it's really just the boats that i am terrified of they're moving faster they have of course the advantage of the water all right as you can see the spear guys are just jumping away heal self by 20 percent damage dealt now they're also healing themselves making them formidable opponents. They're also countering the horses. Unfortunately, they don't counter boats. It's always the... Oh, now look. This is what I was hoping for. As you can see, we have a spawn there. We destroy the portal. We get all the money and the resources as well. And now we only have to deal with the horses. So just as a preemptive measure, I'm going to buy myself another group of spearmen. And that's it. We actually have a potential good run. Because water can only spawn from one point, which means I can focus all my effort in taking out those uh, those boats and make them sink like the Titanic. Also, there's chests sometimes, so make sure to pick them up. Did I forget? Yep, forgot that one as well. Beautiful. Now, we do generate income, which is to do with uh, the houses. Houses near water typically are mansions, which is th uh, mansions which are three, five gold. Regular houses are three gold. I'm still looking for the correct upgrade. Uh, so far, no luck. Ooh, there's flyers, as you can see. So we're immediately being, uh, well, yeah, put to the test. The game figured out that we had a good setup, and it doesn't like it. Can't fault it for it. That's, I don't want to move into that direction, because I might get stuck here. Let's actually move this. Perfect. Um... Or maybe it is fine if we do that. Hmm. Let's actually mess around with this just a little bit. Let's actually build a Hydromancer right here. Okay. We do have some additional arrow potential right there. So let's do that. Upgrading Ballista Towers against boats doesn't make a lot of sense. They do have an AOE upgrade. Fire one additional arrow. But it only seems to be if the enemies are relatively close to one another. Which is a very specific... Uh, prerequisite, but it is what it is. All right, let's move forward. Let's see if this is enough. All right. I'm going to actually do one upgrade here. Now, as you can see, the towers are 
Yeah, they're barely enough. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Let's move them slightly back. Mm. And all the towers are too expensive as well. So we're simply going to take a lot of damage here. Despite the fact that we have upgraded uh, our meta progression, we have a lot of towers. As you can see, it's over. Uh, that is frustrating because I had a really good idea. I had a really good setup. But unfortunately, Hydromancers did not get the correct upgrade, which allows them to shoot an extra projectile. So it is what it is. So let's try this again, right? Because so far, my games have been very short. We could also go to like a harder mode once we unlock that or like the desert, which is an interesting little difference because there's all kinds of like um, conditions. Like, for example, Sandstorm Summon allows you to have an extra spell or an innate spell to the area that deals damage to units, including your own, but also the enemy. So it's a more favorable tower uh, build that you want to do there. If you don't want to like it, you know, if you don't want to do the challenge, so to speak. I'm actually going to just put you over here this time. And hope that we can get some luck or two. Let's see, what do we have? Um, let's go straight there, pick up the chest. What do we have over here? Ah, a hybrid one. Those are always slightly frustrating. Okay. Allies critical damage plus 50. Tower attack range plus 20. Allied range unit attack speed 50% when castles lower than 20. That's actually really interesting. Because we're going to take damage. So we can take damage and then do faster damage ourselves. Maybe that will be the, um, the difference we have to make up for. Alright, let's go and s just quickly move through this layer right here. All right, let's see if I can maybe do something here. Mm, yes. All right, this has a waterfront to it, which might actually mean we could close it right here. That would be really nice, because then I can just focus a double layer over here. Hydromancer, not the one we wanted. We could upgrade arrow towers, get the attack speed. It would not be a terrible notion. Let's do that. We have some melee guys coming in. Can we change that around? Nope, we cannot. Not right now. So let us do that. And we have a perfect close right there. Wonderful. So we only have water from one side possible right now. If we keep an eye on that and don't mess that up, we should be A-OK. -okay. All right, let's put some hydromancers right, like, right there covering both bridges. And then we'll put another tower right there just for convenience sake two towers should be okay because i want to focus on minions all right another range Ooh, look at that muster for battle capacity plus one which means every single hydromancer tower is going to have three units as opposed to two that's 50 percent more that's one of the good upgrades if we can just get the other one we are golden but that's also the problem we just have to get the other one easier said than done i'm afraid all right, let's move our hydromancers right there. Perfect. Go. So if we can get the plus one projectile now, we have some build and AoE with some good single target. I would be very excited about that notion. All right, I'm a little concerned. I'm going to do a quick upgrade here. Took a little bit of damage, but that's okay. We now also have the spearman, which takes care of all the melee guys that we could possibly be afraid of. So I'm okay with that. Let's actually pause the game and see if we can mess around. Let's actually move this boat a little further back. Still looking for... Ooh, the sweet piece. There it is. All right, can I... I could, but I'm not going to. All right, let's... I am going to do one more. It is 46 of them on a short distance. I'm a little, little concerned. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. 310 for another Hydromancer. I would love to build one right in the middle here. That would be very lovely. Yeah, my spear guys are doing a lot of work, but it's clearly not enough as a result of the fact that they don't have the bloodlust yet. So let's upgrade this tower right here. Let's do it again. Max level. And he can solo that. 
So we took a little bit of unnecessary damage. It happens. Um, let's do Hydromancer range skill. Let's hope that we can make the dream build happen. At some point, we have to hit, right? Like, that's just the way that works. At some point, we have to hit. Let's push this back a little bit. Nice corner piece in the water right here. Okay. Maybe we can build a unit over here. Then if we can go up past here and have a double support layer. Cool that value. All right, let's put another Hydromancer right here. Put it over there. Perfect. All right, our spear people are going to town. All right, looks like we have a straight water piece. It's useless. Little chest right there. All right, so the water is taken care of. The arrow tower is doing work against the melee. Folk, perfect. All right, another knight. There's the self-heal. Very good. Arrow tower. Mm. Great lighthouse doesn't work for me at the moment, or maybe I'm doing it wrong. So I'm going to go and be safe and play the attack speed. Okay, the melee guys are taken care of, I hope. Yeah, here, if I do this, we are in trouble, right? So we don't want to do that. Let's move our water tile away. We could try to do that. All right. Let's see. Can I... No, there's no good... Yeah, there's no good moment here. So I'm just going to add another one here just to help with a little ship damage against these boats because the melee guys i'm not really too unsure of right like they have bloodthirst now my spear guys so they're gonna heal when they do damage more than they take damage and they take they kill more than they uh, have to deal with they're chewing through them very quickly so this might be my best game yet i keep saying that every single time i play this game by the way but we are at day seven we have beaten day seven so we are ahead of the curve Chance of critical hit, 50%, but attack speed is also really nice. I'm going to go with crit. I think it's slightly better right now. Okay, those are horses, but we have spearmen, so that's okay. Let's take a quick peek. Oh, look at that. Nice chest. More boats. Let's actually build a hydromancer right on this choke point right here. No, you know what? Let's do it right here. I think it's slightly more convenient. Just to get a little bit of chip damage for the future. All right. There you go. The horses are going down. They are armored, which is always a little scary. The boats are still sinking too. You'll love to see that. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So, night is over. Let's skip that extra damage against mounted that takes care of all the well yeah there you go x riders this time they are scary we have more boats coming in that is a split we do not wish to deal with that now since we have riders on this side and we have boats on here i'm gonna build another hydromancer right there more chip damage from both sides hopefully that will be okay all right let's see I wish I had uh, a thunder spell right now. Ooh, as you can see, the boats are benefiting from the towers being distracted. There are spear guys. They are carving through it. Unfortunately, the boats are carving through my health pool. This is a problem. Having that said, we still win the wave. So this is the furthest I have gotten so far in the game, which is very lovely. Let's do let's do a little bit of alert range that makes them uh, move a little faster. Eleven big boats. Okay, <sighs> time for messing around this over, I suppose. All right, here we go. Let's see. We also have flyers coming from the other side, and I miss them. So that's the game. I was so focused on the boats that my downfall will be my severe lack of attention. We did block all of those, so we spawned, we prevented the spawn from happening here, which means 
we could we could theoretically just double down maybe here and hope that it's gonna be okay uh can i move any items around no because the boats will the boats will get through and ruin my day nope it is what it is i think we are sadly bound to perdition all right come on can't select the tower right now it's a little frustrating but as you can see we don't even get through the flying armor on the bright side the boats i could maybe yeah i could have maybe switched some of these over in time but it's too late now yes yeah, so new record nine days so yeah we did get very lucky with our pathing as you can see we only have like one water wave one ground wave if they were closer to one another it would have been even crazier but yes it really just seems like it's dependent on a level of rng maybe you can do better i challenge you description box will have the demo link thank you all so much for watching make sure to hit the like button subscribe if you want to and i will see you guys next time with a brand new video have a good night enjoy your weekends i'm out